chance fan, so don't let me down. Here's your one chance fan, so don't let me down. <laughs> I had to stop studying with Dr. Mike Thompson, professor of voice. I just could not handle the schedule. Every week, a whole hour. <laughs> he was teaching me how to sing, see? <laughs> not that I'd ever be so gutsy as to say I'd do it in public or anything. I, I just messing around. <laughs> oh, I used to love to sing. When I was a little girl, right up through my 20s, I sang in church, sang in school plays, sang in contests. Once I even got to sing on the radio. <laughs> and people was always real nice about it, saying I had a gift from God and all that. <laughs> Well, I don't know about all that, but I sure did like to sing. <laughs> These days, of course, it's all about the kids. We got three of them, Doug and me, and they're just, well, they're a lot of work. <laughs> and they would hate it when I'd sing around the house. Just hate it, all four of them. So I stopped. <laughs> now, when you got kids in grades three, five, and six, you get looked at with crossed eyes at the Walmart if you are not in the PTA. So... I'm in the PTA. <laughs> Margaret Tasher is the head of it, and let me tell you, she rules it with an iron fist. We call her Margaret Thatcher behind her back, but <laughs> I think she knows it, and <laughs> I think she loves it too. <laughs> it's just easier to agree with her, so I do. Now, she reports directly to Ms. Doris Kitteridge, and you know, you do not want to piss that lady off. So, between that and guitar lessons and football practices and doctor's appointments and a carpool and, and Doug's boys night. Well, there's not much time for anything else. I was gonna sing though. Once upon a time and it seems like a fairy tale now. I wanted to be up there on stage like Reba or Tanya Tucker or, or Dolly Parton even, believe it or not. <laughs> I used to think I could do it too. Of course, as you get older, you get a little more cautious. And you seek a little more safety and in the process, I don't know, you you lose a little bit about what you thought you knew about yourself. Nerve, I guess some people call it. I don't know, you just become somebody else. It's like the law of the universe or something. <laughs> I don't know. These are all things I think about in between loads of laundry. <laughs> yeah. My contact lenses are so blurry. Uh, what do you expect at this point in the day when you Get up at 5.45 a.m. most mornings. That's what time we start our day around here, or I do at least. You know, lunch has got to be packed, and buses got to be caught, and runny noses have to be tended to, and husbands have to be tended to. <laughs> Somebody told me once when I was about 15 that I had beautiful eyes. So I, I try not to hide them underneath thick glasses, and I need thick glasses as I'm just about blind as a bat in both eyes. I swear every time I blink, it's like, Life just gets a little more blurry. <laughs> but just about every night, after I make dinner and clean up, and after I finally get the boys in bed, and, and even Doug is snoring, just about every night, I slip into my nighty, and I sit myself down out on the patio with a glass of Chablis in one of those nice glasses with the stems. <laughs> <laughs> feel the breeze and I, I think about what it was going to be like. Me, in a big, pretty, sparkly gold dress, or something silver maybe even, bracelets, and shiny earrings, hair all done up by professionals, all perfectly styled, lots of hairspray. And most important, with a guitar strapped around me and I'd just sing. I'd sing like I used to. Like I always knew I could. I sing for the love of Jesus and in celebration of life itself. I just sing my heart out. And the audience would rise to their feet like it was their way of saying thank you to me. Thank you for letting them feel something, I, I guess. That would just be the best moment of my whole entire life. A lot of other things happen instead, you know. They say life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Well, that may indeed be true, and, and I'm a lucky woman. Yeah, I had to stop studying with Dr. Mike Thompson, professor of voice from over at the university. 
No time for all that. No money, really, either. I got my kids' futures to think about. Maybe they can be more fancy than I was. <laughs> oh, sometimes I'm sitting out on that patio and it gets to be around midnight or sometime around then. I could swear I'd drift off into another universe, like a different dimension, maybe. Things are real different there. There's music and light everywhere. And I'm standing up tall in that big sparkly dress. And I got lots of lipstick on. And I'm smiling. And there's joy. Next thing I know, the alarm goes off and I'm making everybody eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't so bad. Mm -hmm.